The Village, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, is considered by many as the film that turned his career around for the worst. This film was followed by Lady in the Water and The Happening, if I'm not mistaken. Two films that in my opinion are weak and pretentious. I didn't see The, Air, the Last Airbender, so I'm not going to comment on that, but I, I've heard that it's pretty bad. Anyway, uh, be aware that this review contains spoilers, so if you uh, haven't seen this film, you have been warned. It's actually more enjoyable if you've seen the film uh, and know the story. In any case, the film's plot can be summarized very, very easily. The population of a small, isolated countryside village believe that their alliance with the mysterious creatures that inhabit the forest around them is coming to an end. I recently watched The Village again and I have to be honest, it struck a different chord in me this time. I remember watching this film in theaters and feeling like I had been robbed. The whole marketing for this film revolved around the creatures in the woods in this isolated village. I was expecting a horror film, a thriller or something like that. I didn't get that. It pissed me off. And for years I was first in line to criticize this film whenever I could. What I failed to realize at the time is that I wasn't watching a thriller or a horror film, I was watching a love story. The marketing for this film was very very well handled, but it backfired, and that damage is still felt today whenever this film comes up in a conversation. Now with that said, it might seem like I went the opposite way, and now I love this film. No, that's not the case. But I certainly don't think it's a bad film anymore. M. Night Shyamalan is an extremely talented and skilled director. Much like Signs, Unbreakable or The Sixth Sense, this film is beautiful to watch. It's wonderfully shot, the compositions are original and narrate the action very effectively. There is a lot of suspense in this film achieved solely by the camera and the way the shots reveal the action taking place. The scenes are beautifully staged and the performances are top notch. The editing is flawless and the film goes by in a heartbeat. In that sense, it's an absolute masterpiece. As a director, and most of all a viewer, I was smiling from start to finish watching this film after so many years. The film surprised me, I saw it without the pollution that its marketing had. Nothing backfired this time because I had no expectations. Well, I did have one, I thought it was going to change the channel after 10 minutes. But I didn't, I enjoyed the film very much. However, even with this newfound appreciation for the film, I still think it has problems. Not the problems I thought it had, but other issues with the script. I feel like the script needed a few more months of development to solve some issues. However, if it had to be shot as it was, I think Shyamalan ended up with the best possible film. The choices I don't like in the film are choices I myself would probably go with if I had to shoot the film and couldn't work for another year developing it further and solving the roadblocks it has. Everything is fine in the film up until the part Lucius gets stabbed by Noah. The whole drama that drives the film from then on is a bit silly and really not that much of an obstacle for the main characters. Let's be reasonable. A guy is dying and you send a blind girl to trek through some woods to reach a road somewhere and then get help? Why didn't William Hurt's character just do this himself? He could have done it secretly if that was the issue. Nothing would be in jeopardy. I mean Sigourney Weaver's character was the one taking care of Lucius. She was one of the founders of the village too, so the secret would always be safe. Lucius would be healed and no questions asked. Why didn't they just take care of it? I think I know the answer to that question. It's not interesting and it's anticlimactic. But most of all, it's not interesting. As I said, this is a love story. This is how Ivy saves Lucius from death in a race against time. And you have to admit that that's a little more interesting than, you know, solving the film's main conflict in 10 minutes by doing the logical thing. Ignoring these problems is how I started to enjoy the village, when I decided not to question those choices and just enjoy the ride. However, it goes without saying, I think this script could have used a little more time to try and solve these issues. A scenario in which Ivy could still go on her adventure and somehow still make sense for William Hurt or any of the elders to stay behind. A good solid reason. When I was watching the film I was waiting for at least some hint of explanation, but it never came. Just send the girl and treat it as this unavoidable and perilous task that has to be done. And it's beautifully dealt with, no doubt there. As I said, with the script as it is, Shyamalan did a hell of a job. Noah's attack, disguised as one of the creatures, is a clever idea. But I would have removed the creature type sound effects the scene has when he's stalking and chasing Ivy. That would have been more honest from a script perspective. I could also question the way the whole scene is staged. It's not natural or realistic, it's purely a visual masturbation. I think Shyamalan went a tiny bit too far there, prioritizing aesthetics over story. But at the end of the day, I love the scene, and seeing it staged more realistically would have removed the suspense that makes it shine. It's hard to decide, really. One last detail I didn't like was the clunky airplane exposition. Shyamalan himself explaining why no planes ever crossed the skies in that area. Did we really need that? 
Okay, obviously some moviegoers will bring that up. So what? So many commitments had already been made up to that point in terms of credibility. Why bother coming up with some stupid reason to explain that? Sometimes less is more. And I only saw that as a poor attempt to fill in gaps that really didn't need to be filled. But again, even with all these issues, I still enjoyed watching The Village again. And I changed my opinion on it. I think it's a wonderful film to watch, in spite of all its problems. As I briefly mentioned before, the film is very well acted. The casting is spot on and I love Adrian Brody. He makes Noah work. It's not an easy task. And Bryce Dallas Howard is lovely to watch. She carries this film on her back towards the end. And that's saying something. It's also curious to see Jesse Eisenberg taking his first steps in major productions. He has a very small role but you can't miss him. M. Night Shyamalan maintains the elegance and class that established him as one of the finest of his generation. It's sad to see how such a gifted artist was able to completely mess up his following projects. I hope he makes a triumphant comeback because this guy knows film, it runs deep in his veins. When he's at his best, you get something wonderful and memorable. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think about The Village. Have you watched it recently? Do you still hate it like so many do or did you find a new way to enjoy it as I did? Let me know your thoughts on that. In any case, if you liked this review and would like to see more, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. Also press that like button, it really helps. I've only produced three movie reviews so far, this being my third, and I'm still kind of fine-tuning the format. If you have time and you're curious, check out my other two reviews and let me know what you think. I reviewed What Lies Beneath and The War of the Roses, so go check those out. Thanks a lot guys and I'll talk to you soon. I'm back, Lucius. <laughs>